Good morning, children. Welcome again in biology class. Children, today we'll do chapter anatomy of flowering plants. Chapter number six. So let's come to the topic anatomy. So what is anatomy? The anatomy, it is the study of internal structure of organism. That means the histology. And the anatomy and histology in plants, they are used interchangeably. Now, what is the importance of anatomy? The anatomy, it helps in solving taxonomic problems and establishing phylogenetic relationship among plants. Now, it also helpful in pharmacognosy. That means pharmacognosy is branch of science which deals with the study of sources, characteristics, and possible use of medicinal substances in their natural or unprepared forms. It also helps in identifying the adulterated spices, coffee, dyes, tobacco, saffron, then asafoetida, plant drugs, and other plant products. Now, it also helps in tracing the inferior wood as compared to the certified and standard wood which is required for construction, furniture, shipbuilding, vehicles, etc. Now, forensic experts utilize the knowledge of plant anatomy to identify various plants and plant products found at the site of crime. So, let's come to the plant tissues and their types. So children, you have already studied about the tissues in class 9. So what is a tissue? So a tissue, it is a group of cells having common origin and usually performing common functions. All the plant parts like stem, leaves, flower, root and fruits, they are all made up of different kinds of tissues and they are performing different functions. Now this plant tissue, it is divided into two main groups, or the meristematic tissue and permanent tissues. So here is a flow diagram of a plant tissue. Now plant tissue, which is divided or categorized to two parts, meristematic tissue, permanent tissue. Meristematic tissue, means that the temporary tissue they undergo division whereas permanent tissue they do not go under division. Now same again permanent tissues they are again divided into two simple permanent tissues and complex permanent tissue. Now simple permanent tissue again divided into three categories parenchyma, corenchyma, sclerenchyma where sclerenchyma again divided into sclerent fibers and sclerioids. And again, this complex tissue or the permanent tissue again divided into complex permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue again divided into two, xylem and the phloem, which are also known as vascular tissue. So let's study about the meristematic tissue. Now meristematic tissues have the capacity of active cell division and they are known as meristem. They show the particular characteristics like these are living cells with thin and elastic cell wall. These are round or polygonal in structure. These are compactly arranged and without intercellular spaces. Vacuoles, they are few or small in size. Now cytoplasm, it is dense with distinct nucleus. Plastids are absent stand, instead of praplastids are found. Now, they do not store reserve food and they are in state of high biosynthetic activity. Now, they are good, capable of dividing indefinitely. Now, these are usually found at the apices of root and shoot. So, let's do the classification of meristematic tissues. Now, classification on the base of origin and method of development. So, promerister, 
and primary meristem. Now, some pro meristem they originate from embryo, so it is also called primordial or embryonic meristem. Now, these cells they occupy a small area at the tip of stem and root. Now, primary meristem it gives rise to primary meristem where formation of new organs is initiated. Now, primary meristem it is derived from the pro meristem and retains the capacity to divide throughout the life of the plant. It is represented by apical meristem and it is present at the tip of the roots and the stems. Now, intercalary meristem and intrafascicular cambium they are present in the open vascular bundles of dicot stem. The primary meristem forms the different primary permanent tissues, but intravesicular cambium produces secondary vascular tissues at medullary rays. Now, here is a figure 6.1 intravesicular cambium showing the cambium ring, ring formed from intravesicular and intervesicular cambium. Here, this is the primary phloem, primary xylem, and Epidermis, the cortex, the intrafascicular cambium. Now, this intrafascicular cambium during the secondary growth it forms intrafascicular cambium. The secondary meristem develops in the primary permanent tissues and it gives rise to secondary permanent tissues which are added to the girth of the or the thickness of the plant. Now, called cambium or phalogen, intra interfascicular cambium, vascular cambium, wound cambium, and accessory cambium, they are the examples of secondary meristem. Now, permanent tissues, they are made up of mature cells that have undergone growth and differentiation. Now, these tissues, they originate from meristematic tissues and occupy a fixed position in the plant body. These are definite in shape, size and function. And they have lost their power of division, but under special circumstances, they may resume power of division. Now, permanent tissues, depending upon their origin types, divided into primary and secondary. Now, on the basis of composition, permanent tissues can be simple or complex. So, simple permanent tissues are groups of permanent cells which are all alike in origin, form and function. And there are of three types, primary, parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Upon parenchyma, they are formed of living isodiametric thin wall cells may be oval, spherical or polygonal in shape and they have thin cell wall which is made up of cellulose and large central vacuole. The intercellular spaces between the cells they are smaller. Now here is a diagram of parenchyma cells. See here, these are the parenchymata cells, cytoplasm vacuole and nucleus and the intercellular spaces are also there. See, these are the, the space between two cells, okay. Now, parenchyma cells, they modify accordingly to perform various functions such as Manufacture and storage of food, provides buoyancy, transports water, minerals, and food, gives mechanical strength, and stores water in xerophytes. It also maintains the form and shape of herbaceous plants and gives rise to secondary meristem that are called cambium and vascular cambium. So, this is all for today, children. In our next class, we'll again learn about the tissues. Till then, thank you and have a nice day.